Hey everybody, this is Alex Merced from alexmercedcoder.com and this video is first in a brief series of just sort of really, really basic introduction to Rails videos. And no, I don't have siren sound effects. I live in Brooklyn and there's constantly sirens in my neighborhood because I'm not too far from a hospital and it's a busy street. So, just so you're aware. Um, but anyways, Ruby on Rails is a backend framework in the Ruby ecosystem. It's actually probably the number one reason people learn Ruby, to use Ruby on Rails. Um, there's other things you can do in Ruby, but that's sort of like the thing that people use Ruby for, to build web servers and web applications, web APIs uh, using Ruby on Rails. There are other web frameworks in Ruby, such as Sinatra, but we're gonna talk about Ruby on Rails. So I'm gonna assume that you've already installed, so I'm not gonna go over installation in this, so you should have installed the Ruby language. So if you've installed the Ruby programming language, then you should be able to do Ruby-V and see that, hey, you have Ruby installed. Okay, if not, do a Google how to install Ruby on your operating system. Okay, because every operating system is different, even versions of operating systems can be different, so work that out. It can be a little tr tricky to get set up, but once it's set up, you never have to worry about it again. Okay, also you need to then install Rails once you have Ruby installed. So you're gonna do gem install Rails. That'll be the command to install Rails once you have Ruby installed. Okay, and then after you run that command, you should have Rails-V, and so you can see that you have Rails installed. You should also have Bundler. So you wanna do gem install Bundler. Okay, if you ever use Node and NPM, in Node, when someone has a package.json file with a list of dependencies, you could run NPM install and it would install all of those dependencies. In Ruby, you have gem files that list all the different gems you've installed for that particular project. Bundler allows you to install all of the different gems inside that particular gem file. Okay, so essentially it's a separate thing, so you can kind of have that same... Uh, workflow. So gem install bundler. You'll know if you have bundler if you do bundler dash v and see I got bundler version. Cool. So if you have all those things installed that's great. Um, and then you also gonna want to I'm gonna use Postgres over the next few videos. Not in this video but eventually I'll, I'll, I'll use Postgres. So I'm usually I'm pretty sure it's Postgres SQL. I think dash v no, PSQL dash V, I always forget what's the exact requires dash dash V. Okay, so PSQL dash dash V. Uh, what's the, the PSQL dash dash version? There we go. So that's the command you want. PSQL dash dash version. That would mean that the Postgres server is on your system. You've installed it. So again, Google how to install Postgres on your computer. So that way you have that available. Okay, so you do that. And again, there we go with the sirens because um, it's a busy neighborhood. Uh, I do plan on moving out of the city at some point, hopefully in the near future, so you won't hear as many sirens, hopefully, depending on what neighborhood in Florida I end up in. Um, you know, with my luck, I'll end up in the noisiest neighborhood, but you know, we'll cross that bridge. Okay, cool. So that's what you need to have installed for this tutorial series okay now also you may or may not want to install yarn okay I won't get into how to install yarn but if you want to install yarn let's see here yarn dash v see I have yarn okay um, Google how to install yarn on your operating system yarn is just an alternative to npm because there are certain things that rails needs JavaScript for so by default it's going to use yarn to install those things if you already have NPM, you can have it use NPM. You have to just put in a flag. So let's actually create our first Rails project. Okay, by default, the Rails command to make a new project is Rails new. Okay, so we'll just do, I'm not gonna put any flags. Although again, if you do not have yarn on your computer, just do dash dash skip dash yarn, and that'll skip yarn. Okay, which will you know make sure that you don't have to install yarn, okay? If you have NPM installed, you have Node installed on your computer, then that's fine. Okay, but just keep that in mind. 
okay? And if you don't have Node installed, you should have Node installed because you always need Node. Okay, and that'd be at nodejs.org, I think is the, the URL. Okay, and if you want to know if you have Node installed, again, you just type in node-v, see? npm-v, okay? So here we go. So I'm gonna do Rails new, and I'll do the dash dash skip yarn just so you can see how it plays out. So I'm gonna skip yarn. I don't want. I want it to use npm, not yarn. So it'll just do that instead. And this is gonna take a while. So it's gonna see generate all sorts of files. It's taking a while. And then once in a while, it might ask you for your computer password because it needs sudo privileges. So do not use sudo with the Rails new command. If you installed everything correctly, you shouldn't have to. If it needs your sudo privileges, it'll ask you for your password. Okay. Okay, and then it sees installing all the things. So see, it's doing everything for you. Make sure it's all done. Now again, when you do just a normal Rails new command like I just did, it's going to take a lot longer because it's also creating a, all the boilerplate for you to do templating. Okay, nowadays you usually don't use your web server to do templating. Your web server isn't going to generate the actual front end of your website for you as much anymore. Okay, although I forgot to give a project name, so it actually called my project Skip Yarn. So I didn't actually put the Skip Yarn flag, I actually named the folder Skip Yarn. My bad. Um, okay, but I can still show you. So this is kind of like how it would look like. Okay, so it did use Yarn because I didn't give it an. Basically, what you're supposed to do is do Rails new, the name of the folder, then the flags. I forgot that part. So just named it Skip Yarn. Okay. But bottom line is, see, so you see all this stuff here. We'll go through it when we do our actual project. But what I want to show you is if I go to app, app is where all your assets are stored. You see you have a views folder with all these like HTML-ish files called ERB files. It stands for em Embedded Ruby. This is what's called a templating language. We are not going to be using that in this series of videos because I'm looking to build an API. An API doesn't have a front end that you build like a separate React Angular view application for. Okay, so, but that's what happens when you run the normal Ruby Rails new uh, command. It's going to think that you want to build the views here in Rails and give you the tools to do that. And it gives you all this extra stuff. I don't want to do that. This is just to show you that you can do that. So I'm gonna delete this folder. Move the trash. Okay, we're gonna make another one. So if you just wanna build an API, you can save yourself a lot of time because it won't have to install all this extra stuff. It just gives you the basic stuff you need to build an API, which is what you do normally nowadays. You just type in Rails new, and then you give it the project name. So we'll call it my API. And then you would use the flag. So I wanna use dash dash API that tells Rails that we're making an API dash dash skip dash yarn which means it's a skip using yarn to install and I'm only going to use those two for now okay and see that kind of goes by a lot faster okay because it's not setting up as much stuff and if I drop this open it still looks like the same general setup but if I go to my app folder and then I go to views see there's not as many files here okay because it's not expecting me to build my views out okay it'll behave differently okay cool so now we have our project now the way a web server works is that a web server has routes okay which tell it like based on your URL so like even before we do that actually let's just actually run the server so now that we have this project going I'm gonna open up this folder, my API, in my terminal. So I'm gonna do cd change directories. I'm on Linux. cd into the my API folder, and I'm gonna run Rails serve. This is gonna actually turn on the Rails server. Okay, so let's see, it's running it. Uh, something's missing. Don't know how the build task serve. Did you mean secret? Okay, so what I'm going to do, a couple things. I'm going to do one, I'm going to do bundle, bundler install. 
just to make sure that I have everything I need installed installed. So what bundler install does, because we installed bundler earlier, it's going to read this gem file and make sure that anything that's in here that I don't have installed gets installed. The gem file says these are the things you need for this particular project. <clears throat> so I'm gonna do bundler install. So yep, I got everything. So that was so that's not the issue. Maybe it's Rails server. Been a while. Yep. Nope. Anyways, the address already in use. Find port three thousand. Oh, my port three thousand is already in use. Luckily, I have a command for that. Okay. So let's see here. Where are all my things? Um, where's my kill script? Do, 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 do. There it is. Okay, so I'll let you guys want to take a look at it real quick so you can see this is the command to kill a particular port if it's in use. Because I see here, port 3000 is in use. I could change the port. It's not quite as straightforward changing the, the, the default port in Rails. So it's easier for me to just kill it. I'm going to kill the port. Now I should be able to run Rails server. And there we go. The server is running on 127.0.01. So I'm gonna head over to my browser, type in localhost 3000. Cool. And there we go. My, my Rails is working. My Rails server works. I can see that, that that's good. So we now know that that's working. So I can kill my server using control C just like you would in any kind of thing. So very good. And now let's see if we can make a hello world route. Okay, for that we need a controller. Okay, a controller is a, it's gonna be a class with a bunch of functions that we can refer to in our routes. Okay, where these controllers exist is in the app folder. Everything for your app exists in this app folder. So right now I don't really have any controllers other than the app controller. The application controller is just sort of like this big parent controller. So if you want to add functions that exist in all of your controllers, you could add them here. So then any other controller you make inherits from this particular controller. So it allows you to create like global methods if you need them. I'm um, not gonna worry about that now. So to create a controller, I do Rails G. Re Rails G stands for generate. So I wanna generate something. What do I wanna generate? A controller. We're gonna call it hello. So Rails G controller, hello, is gonna generate a new controller called hello. And so that way it sets everything up for me. So I do that. Okay, and see it tells you it created a new file called hello controller.rb. Okay, cool. So now see, if I go back to my controllers file, see now there's this new hello controller. Okay, and then here I can define functions. And these functions are essentially what happens when a certain route gets hit. So I'm just gonna define a real simple one, def world. And all this is gonna do is return the string, hello world. That's all this will do. Okay, so there's my function. So how do I bind this function that's gonna return the string hello world to a route? I go to the config folder. In the config folder, we'll find the file called routes. Here's where all your routes are defined. Okie dokie. So if I remember right, I should be able to just type in get, and then we type in the route. So we'll just say slash. Um, do, 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 do. Something else I gotta put there. Let's see here. Let's Google it real quick. Rails route syntax. Because you'll see there's a lot of commands that kind of generate a lot of that stuff for you. There we go. Just wanna see one example. Here we go. Get patient ID two. That's what I was looking for. Okay. Nope. There we go. Okay. Then we want to use two, because essentially what you're passing is a hash. It just doesn't look like it. And that hash has a key of two. And the value is going to be the hello controller. So always the first thing is the controller. Then generally you put a hash, and then it means what controller, what function of that controller we want to do. So there's the hello controller. 
Okay. And that controller has a function called world. So we're saying, hey, whenever we go to the root, run the function from the hello controller, run the function that's called world from that controller. That's how this reads. Okay, let me just double check that syntax one more time. Get patients, comma, two. Okay, I don't need the ass part. So like that's essentially the syntax. Okay. And again, essentially this is really one function get that's taking two arguments, a string, that's the route, and then this hash that points to the function. And see, you don't see the curly brackets because implicitly Ruby will notice that if you use a symbol like this, that you are passing in a hash, it just knows because Ruby's cool like that. Okay, cool. So in that case, now if I wanna make sure that that route got created before I test it out, I can type in Rails routes. Okay, and this gives you a list of all the routes that exist. So I'm gonna scroll to the top and I see there's a get route that points to hello world. Okay, the hello controller world function. So the so it realizes the route exists, that's good. Now let's test it out, Rails server. Server's running, let's go back over here, back to here. Now when I refresh, because this is the root, the basic one says just a slash that represents this, just nothing. Um, I should get hello world. Uh, let me try a shift refresh. Hmm. That didn't quite work the way I wanted it to. Why not? Let's see here it says processing hello control HTML. Rollization. But it's not HTML. Okay, so it, wa it wants me to put in like HTML. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put h1 slash h1. Since I'm returning a string, I think it's just trying to process it as HTML. Or what I can do is I can return a hash. We'll just return a hash and we'll just say um, hello world. Okay, and I'll just return that and it should automatically return it as JSON. So let's just do this run the server again, because it'll determine what it's supposed to be sending at back based on what you sent. So let's see here, still doesn't like it. Hmm. Get processing by hello controller has HTML. We don't want it as HTML. Let me see here. What, I might be missing something in my function. So let's see here. Let's go to Rails controllers. Rails controller is probably a JSON function. Controller return JSON. There we go. Let's see here. Okay. So you're building part of it, you're building an API, the third part is. There we go. Show render JSON. There we go. That's what I need. Okay. So what I want to do here is actually render. Let me just copy that syntax. Render JSON. There we go. Render. JSON, and then we'll say hello world. Okay. So basically, what this is, I'm saying render this. This takes this hash and turns it into JSON. So this is a function that's taking this as an argument, and then this is a function that's taking this as an argument. Okay. And again, in Ruby, I could use a parenthesis and make that a little bit clear. So I would put a parenthesis around here, and then another parenthesis around here, but um, Ruby. Generally, you don't have to use a parentheses, so just to, for you get to get used to it. So let's run that function again. Let's go back over here. Oh, doesn't like that either. Let's see why? Expecting end. Well, 
Station Station. Hiking and render Jason. Hello world. Make one more change. Let's try to save it in a variable prior. So let's just say my hash equals hello world. Just be explicit about this. Okay. My hash. Then we'll say render. Just to make that very clear what I'm trying to do here. Save. Okay. Unfind method. Also wants it to be capitalized. Okay. Nope, not quite. Do 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 do. Render Jason. Oh, I see. My bad. There we go. Gotta pass it in as a symbol. Okay. Let's try that again. There we go. Okay, so there we rendered the JSON. Okay. So, see, basically this function, I'm saving this hash into my hash, and then this, I'm rendering this, and essentially I'm passing in this hash of JSON my hash, and that's how it knows, like, this needs to be, this, whatever's inside here, needs to be turned into JSON. And then that's, it takes this hash, converts it to JSON, and returns that. So that's how you create a basic Hello World route. Took a little bit longer than I expected, but the benefit is, you got to watch the troubleshooting process, which I always like to keep in the video so that way you can see the process. So that way, if you run into other errors, you kind of have an idea of like how to go about fixing things and looking for an answer. So you see my Google searches, you see the whole process. Now, that's it. That's all I wanted to do in this video. I wanted to just kind of do a hello world, an API hello world in Rails. So now we're gonna do is in the next video, we'll explore a little bit deeper and how to use to generate, to generate more stuff. And basically, yeah, we'll leave it at that. I'll see you guys in the next video. Have a great day and enjoy.